In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. The Codex Gigas, aka the Devil's Bible. Keep in mind, this is a, a book written in the 13th century. The legend goes that there was a monk known as Herman the Recluse. He was part of a monastery in the Czech Republic. For some reason, he was going to get executed. He said to the monks, if you guys spare my life, I promise I'll write a book with all of earthly knowledge and secrets of the world. He told them, okay, we'll spare your life, but with one condition. You have to write the book in one night. So, How long was this book? Bro, I'm pretty sure it was going to be a long ass book. So the reason why they told him to do it in one night is so he wouldn't make it so he was like okay no problem he was writing for a little bit obviously he quickly realized that it's impossible he resorted to making a deal with the devil so he told him in exchange for my soul help me write this book in one night the next day the book was created it was this huge ass book it weighed over 100 pounds you needed two people to carry it they, Man, what the f and it has a lot of illustrations of the devil and shit and also they tested it out and they realized that it would take 20 years of continuous writing for them to recreate the book like i said there's no new teachings in it but there was a point in time where there was a fire and wherever it was being kept and shit they basically tried to rescue it and 10 pages ended up going missing so what they're saying is that maybe those 10 pages were or something new knowledge that we're not supposed to know about that's a very interesting story i don't know if i necessarily believe it because if someone was able to sell their soul in a situation to help them write a book to get out of a tight spot, why would they just not sell their soul to get out of a tight spot before they even were in that situation, you know? Now don't get me wrong, I do believe that there's probably some kind of book of the devil out there for sure, but do you think it actually revolves around this story? Let me know in the comments. You can't say that that mountain side profile does not look like the Sphinx from Egypt. Who knows, maybe the Sphinx type creatures were something that walked around this earth a very, very, very long time ago, and people just started idolizing them and worshipping them as gods? We're just seeing old relics of people's work in the past. It's a pretty interesting theory. Shit's getting weird. Part infinite. Yep, this is actually happening, and millions of dogs are being infected with deadly diseases that after just one lick, is causing people to have multiple organ failures and all limbs amputated. People were terrified after one woman had a tiny paper cut on her hand. And after her dog licked it, she woke up the next morning with her hands and legs needing immediate amputation. And this could be happening to other dog owners. The doctor told the woman that if she did not get amputated, the virus would have spread through her entire body in a matter of just hours and eventually her heart. People thought this disease wasn't common, but were shocked that over a whopping 70% of dogs will have it and it will remain dormant in them. Doctors have started warning others against having dogs lick any wounds and avoid licks to any parts of the face, including eyes, nose, and mouth, as your life may end in just one day. Known as the Capnocytophaga bacteria. Although this woman's condition is rare, if a dog passes this on to you with other bacteria, it could be the end of- First things first, did she just let the dog lick her again? Because we don't let dogs lick our face like that. It's just, hell no. Okay? Hell no. We got lucky because Peanut doesn't lick my face. I, I can put my face next to Peanut. He'll be like, nigga, ugh. <laughs> watch, I'll show you. Watch, watch. Hey, Peanut. Never do it like that. Never do it like that. Never do it. Can I just get a kiss real quick, Peanut? He's like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> now, from my understanding, this is rare. This is very rare. I looked it up and I was like, and then I came back to the guy's video and I was like, bro, why did you make your video like this? The background music, all that stuff, fear mongering 101. <laughs> but regardless, don't let your dogs lick your face, bro. That shit is nasty. Hey, don't get me wrong. I love my dog, but I would never let my dog lick my face, let alone barely lick me. I'm not much for that. And I know back in the day, I used to hear people say all the time that dogs have some of the cleanest mouths in the world. And I just find that extremely hard to believe.
And like in this video, that kid was letting that dog lick its face and his tongue was out. And it was just like, Ugh, no thanks. That's uh, not for me. And I know a lot of people that let their dogs lick their face. I even knew this one person that let their dog lick food out of their mouth. It was really nasty. But hey, to eat your own, if that's what makes you happy, go for it. But it's definitely not for me. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed, and thank you so much for watching. And I'm really sorry that I'm sounding a little off today. I am really not feeling the best. I had to call out of work again, and my breathing, trust me, it's not good. I am taking care of it with some tea and mullein and some honey as well. And it does help break up the congestion. So I appreciate the tips and advice that you guys have been giving me for the past couple of days. What does everybody see wrong with this picture, right? What does everybody see wrong with this picture? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It's the fact that Harry Sisson and Chris Mowry are in this photo. Now, everybody probably knows about the controversy behind their names, but let me really open up everybody's eyes. First off, let's start with Harry Sisson's LinkedIn profile, right? He's worked in local government and with political leaders around the country. Well, this is Harry's experience and his education, right? Now, ever since September 2022, he's been enrolled in political science and government courses. Now, what's interesting about his experience is he just so happens to be a content creator for Palette Management since October 2022. And the reason that's so interesting is because, well, if you just so happen to look at all expenditures by the Democratic Party in 2022, you might just so happen to see who on that list with that amount of money right there. But wait, that's not all. Let me just say this is for educational purposes only. These are other similar profiles on LinkedIn that are associated with Mr. Harry himself, right? With Chris Mowry being right there. Kind of weird how you can find their transaction history. Oh, kind of ironic how that amount just so happens to equal the same amount that I just showed everybody, right? With the disbursement date being none other than when? For $200,000, Harry. For $200,000. I'm sure it's no coincidence, right? Harry wouldn't give us biased news. But you know what's really interesting, right? When that influencer meeting was called upon by Joe Biden himself, right? Mr. Harry Sisson just so happened to be at that meeting. But this is who I want the main attention on right here, right? I'm sure everybody knows who that is. Because shit like this is definitely not sketchy, right? She wouldn't be reporting biased news, would she? But what's really intriguing is she just so happens to be associated with none other than who? Sitting at that table looking real comfortable, aren't you? Aren't you? Looking real comfortable, aren't you? He wouldn't give anybody biased news, would he? You can never pay me enough to be at the White House without running my motherfucking mouth. And it doesn't matter what candidate is in office. I would have a mouthful for the President of the United States. Let's talk about the veterans that you leave in ditches. Let's talk about your failing education system. Or let's talk about this, which they're pretty open about now. With supposedly a third of people ages 18 to 29 preferring to get their news from TikTok and other social media. So supposedly the what is working on new ways to get its message out to those audiences. And V from under the desk news like I just showed you. Saying that she was very excited to be at the people's house having lemonade waiting for the president to speak. And then they fly how many followers that she has. So you enjoyed your moment being around the individual that wants to ban TikTok. But then you want to criticize their actions of wanting to ban TikTok. Make it make fucking sense. Or talk about the fact that there's two sides of the same coin. But nobody seems to be wanting to bring that up. But see, me, as a major upcoming content creator, right? I do speak upon that shit. And I stand in the motherfucking middle. And I say it how it is. And how it deserves to be said. And if you don't have the confidence to be able to do so, you can move aside. This is the people's time. And if you're going to spew propaganda all over TikTok, then you need to do it in person as well. Voice your opinion since you seem to be so confident doing it on TikTok. Or just keep showing how big your ego really is. And everybody go ahead and tag his ass. Go ahead and tag her too. We can go to bat all day. Because me as a content creator, right? I don't just yell into my videos. I come with motherfucking receipts. And whether or not you like it, content creators like myself and my marketing team that has millions of followers of their own will run this app. We'll open up people's eyes and we will be making a difference. And if we had to put content creators like these individuals on blast because they don't want to utilize their motherfucking platform for that exact same motive, then we will. And you motherfuckers won't say a damn thing about it. We are the people for the people. We are the voice for the voiceless. And I stand my ground firmly and I say it how it needs to be said. And if you got a problem with that, well, you could just block me. Not that I really care. This is the age of Aquarius, people. This is the age of conscious awakening. This is the age of paving a path for humanity to finally be able to move forward. 
tearing down this infrastructural society around us that has done nothing for us. So you could choose to be a part of the reason why humanity actually moves forward yourself or just be left behind. Welcome to reality, people. Time to wake the fuck up. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't even know who half of those people were he was referencing in these videos. I think they were a lot of TikTok influencers. The only one that I faintly recognized was that guy with the longer orange hair. I seen him complain about the government basically shutting down TikTok at the end of next year. So this was a little bit of new information to me that I really am not 100% sure I understand completely. I just think that there's a lot of behind the scenes money transfer of people getting paid to talk about certain subjects. And it also shows that if these are TikTok influencers that were complaining about the government shutting down TikTok, it is kind of odd that they're all kind of buddy buddies with people in power now and not really saying much about it, you know? But then again, I'm not really 100% sure I even know exactly what all this is talking about, so I could be completely misunderstood. Are any of you guys aware of what this topic is exactly? Because I'm interested in it. I'm always curious to see who's behind the scenes in the form of social media. Because I really think that social media is definitely going to be the future of our main form of entertainment beyond news sources and TV. I really think that platforms like YouTube, TikTok, and things like that are gonna be our future. And this is just one small portion of its earlier stages of something more serious happening. What do they look like? They're like seven feet tall black things. That's why. What, what am I supposed to say? They're, they're literally like seven feet tall. They look like Slenderman. It's just like an all black figure. They're like, a, their like arms shadowy. Are, yeah, yeah like their like arms are longer That's than their crazy. body. And then it's just like neon white eyes. That's it. White eyes? Like white, 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 shining like yeah. That's literally like Enderman LED. from Minecraft. Yeah. What the hell is an Enderman? You don't play Minecraft? You don't play Minecraft? I mean, she's never, young, she's I've young. Never played okay, anyway, you see these shadow so, people. Yeah, and then before the biggest thing I think would happen, I, I experienced sleep paralysis for the first time. Oh. And then I had to call her in, and I was literally just like screaming. Wait, was it while you're paralyzed or? Like, the thing is, because normally with sleep paralysis, you're supposed to be asleep. Yeah. You know how sleep paralysis works. Yeah, but, but like, I swear you can't, like, call somebody no, in. No, but that's, that's, that's the weird part. I call it sleep paralysis because I don't know what else to call it. I wasn't asleep. Like, I was fully awake. But I just felt like, I swear to God, I felt something. Like, I felt one of those, like, black men. Yeah. The shadow people yeah. <laughs> creeping up behind me. And then, all like, I'm just lying on my bed on my phone. And all of a sudden, I just feel something, like, on top of me. And I'm like, oh shit. And I can't move. Like, I dropped my phone. Like, I couldn't, my hand couldn't even, like, flex or anything. Like, I was yeah. just stuck like that. Being stuck in a sleep paralysis state is miserable. It's happened to me twice, or at least I think they were sleep paralysis moments. Uh, I'll go ahead and just give this story. Hopefully, it's not too long winded. A long time ago, this happened two times, two separate times, years apart from each other. The first time was when I was probably at least 12, maybe 13, somewhere in there. And I was in my room at my parents' house. And I remember I had this pull-out couch. That's what I slept on. It was really late. I just got done playing video games and it was time for bed. So I get in bed and as far as I know, I fall asleep. I'm not 100% sure exactly how much time passed, but I remember waking up and it was extremely dark. And I, I remember I was woken by a sound of what sounded like chains, like metal chains rattling and sliding on the floor. I remember it very specifically because that was the automatic thing that popped into my head when I heard the sounds. Oh, that's rattling chains. And I sleep in a fetal position with my back away from the door so I could not see the door. And I'm listening and next thing I know I hear the chains sliding on the floor rattling getting closer to my bedroom door. And I'm listening I'm like well maybe my dad's just doing something. He might have been getting something ready for work. And then I started hearing my door open. My bedroom door. I could hear the, the knob open and the door being pushed open. And then I started to freak out a little bit. I'm like, okay, well, I, I need to see what this is. So I try to look and I cannot move. And then I start to panic because I'm now hearing whatever opened my door. I can hear it coming closer. I can hear its feet sliding against the ground. I can hear the chains rattling and I'm trying to move. And at this point I'm laying like this and I'm trying to move and I'm trying to look as far over as I can and I can't. And next thing I know, I feel a hand push down on this arm and it like pushes and grabs it kind of firmly. And I can hear the breathing in my ear. I could even feel it. 
I could hear the breathing. <coughs> oh, I can't breathe like that. But I could hear faint breathing in my ear, and I could feel the, the breath hitting my face. Freaked me out. I, I was trying my hardest to scream until I passed out. And I don't know how long I was trying to scream for, but I was doing all I could to move and scream and just wasn't happening. And I eventually passed out and I woke back up and there was light in my room because it was now morning time. And there was no marks on my arm. My door was shut. Nobody knew anything about the situation. So I'm like, that was just a really bad dream. But that lingered in my mind for a long time after that happened. That was a really stressful moment for me in my life. Well, a couple of years later, I am living at my grandfather's house in Michigan, and I'm not 100% sure what we did throughout the day, but at this point in the day, it was bedtime, and I had my own room that was in the back of the house. I go to bed, I lay on the bed, fetal position, my back facing against the door again. I fall asleep. Next thing I know, I'm waking up to the sounds of chains sliding up against the floor. Immediately when that happened, everything started flooding back to me of what happened a few years ago or a couple years ago. And I'm like, oh boy, this is not going to be good. And I start to panic. And as I'm starting to panic, I'm trying to move and I cannot move again. But I can hear the chains rattling and sliding on the floor as it's getting closer going down the hall to my bedroom. And I'm trying my hardest to look towards the door because I just know that that door is going to open up. And sure enough, I could hear the door open. And this door had a very specific sound when it opened. You could definitely tell it was kind of rustic like. And the chains were sliding closer to me. And the same thing happened. I felt something put its hand on me. And I could feel it and hear it breathing in my ear until I panicked and passed out due to me trying to scream. I was literally trying to holler for my grandfather. At some point in time, I wake back up, it's morning, and my grandfather's already in the dining room, he's eating breakfast, and I am i don't really say anything about it because I knew from my past experience that people would just say that I'm crazy or that I just had a bad dream. And as I sit down at the dinner table, my grandfather was getting some breakfast around for me. He's like, well, did, did you have an upset stomach or something last night? I heard you walking up and down the hall mostly all night last night. That blew my mind when he said that because then I'm like, well, maybe it was just a ghost or something following me. But yeah, that's my creepy sleep paralysis story or whatever it was. It's never happened to me again. And that was years and years and years and years ago. And it still lingers in the back of my mind today. But that's another reason why I always sleep facing the door for the most part nowadays. Like I go to bed, I'm always facing my door. It's really scary going through something like that. It's, it's actually really, horrifying. Have any of you experienced something like that, sleep paralysis, or some kind of weird, really terrifying sleeping thing that just happened to you maybe more than once? Let me know in the comments because I'm sure there's a lot of people that suffer with this kind of stuff. Teeth don't lie. Elvis's personal dentist confirms Bob Joyce is the king. Elvis Presley's dental crown. With model of his teeth is a tantalizing piece of evidence in the ongoing mystery surrounding his identity. The porcelain crown, meticulously crafted by Dr. Henry Weiss, was designed to fill a gap between Elvis's front teeth. Remarkably, Bob Joyce, a figure shrouded in speculation, shares an uncanny resemblance to Elvis. The convergence of evidence is compelling. 1. Dental Evidence While skepticism persists regarding Elvis's dental history, a rare photo released by Henry Weiss's family showcases Elvis's original teeth, complete with a noticeable gap between his front teeth. Intriguingly, this aligns with Bob Joyce's dental anatomy, exhibiting striking similarities in tooth position, shape, and number. The hypothesis emerges that Elvis may have staged his death, subsequently removing his dentures to restore his natural teeth. This revelation adds another layer to the ongoing investigation into Elvis's identity, suggesting a deliberate effort to conceal his true appearance. 2. Hand Anatomy Both Elvis and Bob exhibit identical hand shape, bone structure, size, and gestures confirmed by anatomical experts. 3. Facial Resemblance 
Vernon Presley, Elvis's father, and Bob share the same facial structure and ear shape. The accumulation of these clues suggests a tantalizing hypothesis. Elvis Presley and Bob Joyce are one and the same. The legend of Elvis's death may have been an elaborate ruse, allowing him to shed his public persona and live a quieter life. I mean, you cannot deny that the resemblance is just way too similar, but I do not believe that this guy is Elvis Presley. Elvis would be almost 90 years old today, and Bob Joyce is only in his 60s, if that. There's a noticeable age difference there. I truly think that Bob Joyce just resembles Elvis a lot. And I think he kind of is aware of that as well, and he just, like, rolls with it, because why not? But who knows, there's been some rumors that an old musician is going to reappear that's supposedly been dead, so maybe it's Elvis, and it's possibly Bob Joyce. But I do not really think so. Let me know in the comments if you guys think that's the case, if Bob Joyce is actually Elvis Presley, because I have a feeling that there's probably a lot of people that really think so. If you look at the heart, you discover that there's a bioelectric field that's coming out of the heart, extending 10, sometimes as much as 20 feet. Do you feel like certain people or everyone has an energy field? I mean, we know scientifically proven everyone has an energy field. Now, what I learned when I went to classes at MIT for applied neuroscience, I learned something crazy. I knew about this field, but I didn't know that, let's say I'm in, we're in the room together, right? Let's say you're stressed out mm -hmm. and your cortisol levels are spiking. Mm. That cortisol, that hormone is leaving out of your body, some of it, on your electromagnetic field and winding and interacting with my field and your cortisol is coming into my body. Damn. So your anxiousness, your anxiety, your anger, your frustration could literally directly affect me by your hormones literally going down my field into my body and raising my levels. Wow. And making me feel down, depressed, angry, uh, you know, pissed off. But if you were in a high frequency, high vibration, the opposite can happen. Mm. And those hormones can come into my body and raise my vibration. So, you know, when you say when that person walks in a room, it just the room just lights up. That's actually a true statement. Some people have the power. They're walking in their true power, high vibration, high frequency. You can walk into a room and you can take somebody who's low and bring them to a higher level. Wow. I actually really do kind of believe this, at least to the point where energy is produced from people and you can feel that energy. That energy can latch on to someone else, whether it's depressive energy or high energetic energy. I know some people that are just off the wall energetic. They have good high energy. They're always happy and it really reflects the room. People are more upbeat. It's a real good time when certain people are in a room and it's not just because of how they're acting. You can just sense that there's good energy about some people and that goes to say you can sense some really bad energy from some people. If there's someone that is physically in front of me, I can tell if they mean good business or if they're bad. It's just something that just comes to me and it's I don't know if it's the energy that they're producing or if I just have a good sense of telling when someone is not quite a good person or I could just be an energy vampire and I'm absorbing all the energy around me I hear that's a thing too and I don't necessarily not believe in that I do think that energy vampires are a real thing I have a feeling that there's more energy vampires out there than people realize and including the people that do not realize it they are also energy vampires I really think that we're able to absorb the energy from people and provide it so if someone's feeling down you can give your positive energy to someone's down if you know how to do it. I really think that we have those abilities. So the Pope did do the press conference thing, like I said, it was on the supernatural stuff like that. So there was no trolling. I was giving you um, factual information. The interesting thing now is for Sunday, the Pope has had a, an interview with the 60 Minutes team, which you probably are well aware of. I think it's an Australian channel. Um, and on Sunday, there's an extended version where he goes into the supernatural and UFO stuff in more detail and how they approach it in this day and age and the alien stuff. So that is the one I think everybody needs to watch on Sunday with the 60 minute team. So check that out. I need to try and um, download the one for today and get it in subtitles because unless you speak Italian, you're not going to understand it. I only understood stood bits when it was on about supernatural or whatever it was saying. So I understand little bits that they were saying supernatural in that. But I don't know fully what they said in it, but speaking to a few people, they did go into that topic. And on Sunday, that's the one everybody needs to watch because that will then go into details of how the Catholic Church is approaching this topic, which should give people um, a bit of enlightenment. So, yeah, no trolling. So the, the trolls that keep coming in trolling and the people that do videos saying he's trolling, 
piss off. There's no trolling. You know when I'm trolling, because I'll tell you at the end of the video, I've just trolled you. I did not quite get to watch the live stream of the Pope talking about it. It was not in my language. But I did get to read a translation of it, and it was not about all that I thought it was going to be about. To basically sum up what the live stream was about, the Pope talking about if anything that is claimed to be spiritual or extraterrestrial, if you will, like say we see a UFO in the sky, we cannot just have some random person go out there and say, oh yeah, that was potentially extraterrestrial. Now it has to be handled by someone that's within the realm of the church or within that kind of system to authenticate it being a paranormal extraterrestrial phenomenon. For example, if I said that this coffee cup was blessed by the touch of Jesus and that it could sometimes heal you when you drank out of it, I would not be able to accurately have somebody that's from some kind of museum or something like that come and actually examine this cup. Someone from a holy place like a church will actually have to come and investigate that cup to validate what I'm saying is true or not. That's the way I took it. I could be completely wrong about that. Let me know in the comments if you have a better understanding of it or if there's more to it that I'm just not quite understanding. So the Vatican just came out and said they had UFO spacecraft since 1900s. Really? 1900s? So it's been over 100 years. When y'all gonna tell us this shit? Reason why they are trying to come out now and tell people they got these UFO spacecraft is they're getting people ready for this alien invasion. Yes, 2024 alien invasion will take place. They try to give you a warning when King Charles did that stupid ass portrait. But a portrait that's supposed to be red paint, but it's really red blood. Is he the Antichrist? It's a lot of shit going on, but they will announce UFOs really exist. You know, the Vatican is so twisted. Remember when the Pope released that white bird a couple years ago? As soon as he released that white bird, a black bird came out of nowhere and off them. It's so many twisted allegations with these so-called holy people. Always wonder, how can they do all this shit in the world and get away with it? Unless they was really demons. Unless these UFOs they were speaking about is really demons. He made videos talking about the demon face syndrome, but so many people laughed at it. That demon face syndrome was getting people ready for their UFOs they're about to announce. Banking, politics, governments, laws, order, life, death, religion, it was all created by these great aliens. All these laws people are following, taxes, everything, the great aliens created that shit. People believe these great aliens actually come from hell. And people believe hell was this place underground with a bunch of fire. That's not true. That's another fairy tale. These demons or these great aliens come from Canis Major, Sirius A, the dog star. You know, dog and God, God and dog, it's the same thing. Same reason why they made dog man's best friend. They are trying to tell you that these demons is man's best friend. Okay, something weird just happened to me and I need the internet's opinion. I'm at work and this lady comes in, sits down at the bar and orders a Miller Lite. And then she takes one sip out of it, looks at me and goes, can I ask you a question? I'm like, obviously girl, you can ask me a question. What's up? She's like, my boyfriend of four years has a best friend that I've never met. And they hang out twice a month. He's hanging out with him right now. And the funny thing about it is every time they hang out, he ghosts me for like 24 whole hours. And she goes, I don't know why, but it just makes me feel weird. Like, what do you think is going on? So I think about it and I'm like, well, maybe he's cheating on you. Maybe he's cheating on you with another woman and using that as an excuse. Or maybe he's gay and cheating on you with his best friend. She just chugs her beer, pays her tab and goes, you're right and zooms out of the bar. Should I have like not said anything? I'm kind of scared. I don't know. Hey, that's a pretty deep question to ask somebody just randomly at the bar. I mean, me personally, if someone would have thrown those questions at me, I would have probably given the same response with also replying with, well, have you not asked him about this before? I mean, being a partner for four years and not knowing who they're hanging out with consistently all the time kind of is like, are you not communicating with each other? 
enough or what's going on here i would have definitely have given my thoughts and opinions i mean if you're asking for it it definitely sounds like this individual could be doing some suspicious things there's many other things that i would have asked this lady before I run off like that i'd be like hey well did you have you talked to him about it you know let's talk a little bit about the situation on how you can possibly approach it even you know what would have you have done do you think that that was an appropriate response or do you think that it could have been handled differently let me know in the comments because I am genuinely interested in this because I don't think she was in the wrong. The lady asked for her opinion and if that's what her mind concluded, I don't think that that's a wrong way to give your opinion. And to be honest, the lady that ordered the beer probably already had those suspicions and she was just looking for that validation from someone else as well, you know? Billionaires are holding out on us. One of the most famous billionaires in the world made a shocking viral video announcement recently. And it could change America forever. Mine paying taxes at Berkshire, and we are paying a 21% federal rate. If we send in a check like we did last year, we send in over $5 billion to the U.S. federal government. And if 800 other companies had done the same thing, no other person in the United States would have had to pay a dime of federal taxes, whether income taxes. No social security taxes, no estate taxes, no, it's open down the line. When you hear about billionaires talk about, well, you know, if we all paid our taxes, the rest of the United States wouldn't have to do so because we're actually covering the United States. Sounds really nice. And it just, it sucks that all these extremely wealthy companies look for all the loopholes to not pay taxes. And even Warren Buffett said, if we send in a check like we did last time, it would be five billion. And he used the words if, meaning that there's probably some play going on that they're not quite being 100%. But I wish that other companies would take into accountability, pay the taxes, help our country, and let us prosper because you're still going to be on top, you know? So someone posed a really good question. A113. Let's talk about it. So A113 shows up in a lot of cartoons, a lot of films, all that kind of stuff. Check this out. Now, the official narrative is that it's a room at the California Institute of Arts where a lot of animators took a class. That's the official story. I find it really interesting because symbolism is very important in the entertainment industry. What do you guys think? Do you believe the official narrative or do you think there's something more to it? Honestly, there's probably something more to it to the people that know. When you see A113 on a trolley or on a sign or wherever you're seeing it, it probably is symbolizing a whole message within that scene that only certain people that have the right eyes know what to look for for the message. And I have a feeling that it's probably some really deep hidden messages that if you know what you're looking at, you probably have a lot of information to some super dark organizations. That's just my theory. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that it's just simply where they've studied and they're just paying respect to that? Or do you think there could be something more sinister going on? Are you guys ready for some Nikon camera craziness? If you are and you want to see something crazy, stick around to the very last second of this one minute video because I captured something crazy. But let's take a look at this in the meantime. Both of these were filmed yesterday with my Nikon P1000. And I would like to bring to attention the color of these craters here versus the color of the craters there. Clearly different. Now you need to ask yourself, why would that be? Are we seeing through the moon? Do you know that stars have been captured through the moon as early back as the 1700s has been reported? How is that possible if the moon is a giant, dusty space rock? Something to think about. But what I want to show you here that is kind of crazy is what I captured here on this film in the last second. So keep an eye on it, and I'll get out of the way. See if you notice it. Did you see it? I don't know about you, but I don't think that's a bird or a bat. And I'm gonna do a full video breakdown on it over on my other account, Fittest Flat Earther 2.0, the real backup account. Go check it out over there and have a good day.
Oh, and all this was for entertainment purposes. Of course, I know that this is 238,000 miles away and just a total solid object that we've definitely walked on. I have to give it to him on this one. He actually did catch something going across the moon. I don't know if it was space debris or maybe it was a bird or something that was just within that focus range of the lens, but he did at least catch something. That would have excited me if I was out there filming the moon and I would have seen that, but it looked kind of tiny. But when we're talking about something that's potentially 200 some thousand miles away, that could have been a very large object. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about this. I took 10 grams of mushrooms and realized that dimensions are not places or locations, they're levels of consciousness. Each dimension vibrates at a higher rate than the one below it. In each higher dimension, there exists a clearer and wider perspective of reality, a greater level of knowing. I was in this fractal where everything existed and didn't exist at the same time. I literally felt the presence of God. And when I would when a negative thought would come across me, I was in a different dimension. And when I, when I would change my thoughts to positive, I was again in a different dimension. And the positive dimensions felt so different than the negative ones. And it's impossible to explain the feelings in words. I'm interested to know if anybody else has had the same experiences. Uh, follow for more uh, psychedelic stories. Look closely. Where do you think this image was taken? And I'll give you a hint, it's not on Earth. This is Comet 67P. It's a weird looking thing about four kilometers across with a mass of about four billion tons. It was formed from a pretty gentle collision of two objects, which is why it looks so wonky. It's also changing all the time. Scientists have seen the surface fracture, giant boulders move hundreds of meters across the surface, landslides from collapsing cliffs, and a liter of water vapor mixed with formaldehyde evaporates off its surface every second. The mission to this comet launched in 2004, and it spent 10 years reaching the comet until finally in 20. 14, a lander descended. But a bunch of stuff went wrong when it was trying to land, so the spacecraft spent two hours bouncing around the surface of this comet because it had so little gravity until it finally landed in the shadow of a cliff and took pictures like this. This time lapse was taken over 25 minutes and it's not snowing. What you're seeing is dust particles and cosmic rays and stars coming in and out of the frame as the comet rotates. The mission also found 16 organic compounds on the comet and the amino acid glycine. But there's a problem with being in the shadow of a cliff. There's the cliff, there's the shadow, and there's actually the spacecraft. It couldn't get solar power and the battery only lasted three days. That is so crazy to me. I have a really hard time believing that we've landed on an asteroid like that and we've got that footage. Don't get me wrong. I want to believe it. I really, really do because that's awesome to me, but it looks and feels a little hard to, to believe. And for the time frame, especially when we had such technology to take amazing pictures of the galaxy, you're telling me that that little 25 minute time lapse is all we got? We could not get anything better. I don't know, I might be calling Cap on this one. Let me know what you guys think. This is so creepy. Look at the new photo of King Charles. People are noticing how red demonic people are saying it makes king charles look like he's in hell now a lot of users on x are inverting the photos putting the photo side by side noticing that when you do so it kind of looks like a devil in the middle so if you look in the middle of the photo you can kind of see what looks like the initial markings of baphomet now one user actually put the photo side by side and then flipped it, inverted it. And when you invert it, it looks like the Baphomet head even more. I mean, look at this right here. You can see the horns. It looks like a bull head with the horns, doesn't it? I don't know. Let me know what you think. This is just such a creepy photo. Why would he like this? Why would he want this to be his first photo since his coronation? I just don't get it. I'm not going to lie. I actually like the way it looks. And I've seen a lot of videos about this. And I had a commenter the other day that brought up an extremely good point that I never would have thought of. 
and now I'm kind of on the line of believing and also think this about other things that are happening as well. What if this portrait is a signal to people that's been quote unquote MK Ultra or put under some other kind of secret mind control project that people are under and when they seen this portrait it triggered that hypnosis. So just be on the lookout in the surrounding areas of this country and see if anything major happens. That's a really good theory I would have never have thought of. And to just think that this painting could possibly have so many different symbols on it that's activating someone to either have bad thoughts or do some really bad things, that's a good possibility. Let me know what you guys think about that. Like when you, you make an 56 a grand an hour playing video games in your draws. It's kind of hard wait, to get wait, me to go wait, out in the whoa. country for, you know whoa, what I'm saying? Whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on. Pause, pause, pause. You got it. You said 50, 60 grand an this hour. This is what I, this is, and I'm on the, I'm on the low tier. I'm on the low tier. This dude's making millions a month. I'm making less than T Chris. Oh shit. I, I know I'm making less than T Chris. Well, I mean, when we talk about hourly, I know I'm doing less than T Chris. But you talk about like, when I, when I this get some deals, fucking plan, yeah, when I get deals like 7 Eleven. They gave me 250 grand to play any game I wanted for two hours, but just in certain intervals, just say, "Hey guys, 7-Eleven has pizza now. Don't you don't you want a pizza from 7-Eleven? Cool. Let's get back to the game for two hours. Easy, Easy money. You think about the pack clothes. Go get on the stage for an hour and a half. Sweat it out in a state that I don't know what the fuck is going. On before I stay in that room and just say, 7-Eleven has pizza." And then go back to the game, you think you're going to get me to leave my house? That's a lot of money for a sponsorship. That's pretty crazy. I don't think that I had ever have it in me to do a sponsor because it just seems really fake to me and I'd feel bad about sponsoring something I do not necessarily believe in sponsoring. And I would also think that my subscribers watching would be like, really? He's sponsoring pizza? Now don't get me wrong, I have been reached out to before through my emails four times now since I've started this YouTube channel to do sponsors on certain things. One was a jersey clothing brand where they were going to provide me with my own customized jersey to advertise and talk about and that sounded really cool and they were going to give me commissions off of how many people bought from the shop. Not a bad sponsor idea but it still wasn't for me. One, I don't wear jerseys. I'm not going to talk about how nice this jersey is because I wear them all the time. I have no clue about jerseys. So I'm not going to advertise and sponsor to the people that watch my channel on something that I don't even do in the first place. It makes no sense. The other one was about sunglasses. One was a microphone and I thought that was pretty neat. I, I don't remember the brand. I'd have to go back and look through the emails, but it, it was a really specific sponsorship. One, I could keep the microphone, but I had to do three sponsored videos and they had to reach a certain engagement to the audience as well, or they would request the microphone that they sent me back. And I'm like, oh, that's ridiculous. So I don't know about sponsorships. It's not really for me. And I'd also think that you guys would think a little less of me if I did something like that. But I don't know. I've never been offered $50,000 to do a sponsor before. And if I did a sponsor, you know they're probably paying me some pretty good money to do it. Let me know what you guys think about YouTubers that get into sponsorships and stuff. Because I think it's, it's a little silly, but I get it. We're all out here trying to make some money. But I would just feel a little off sponsoring something that I do not necessarily believe in. But if it was something that I truly thought was actually worth sponsoring I would definitely sponsor it and I would let you guys know my genuine opinion about it even if it was something that I didn't like in the process of the sponsorship I'd let you guys know because I don't play that game where I lie about something just because I'm making money for it probably a reason why I'll never get big dollared sponsorships or anything like that because I'm just too open mouthed when it comes to things you know all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here I'm sorry it was really short I really really planned on this being a long video I was up really early this morning because I could not breathe so I was just sitting on my phone just scrolling through TikTok and I collected a lot of videos for us to watch today and for some reason when I got to my desktop all of the videos were gone and they said that they were unavailable. They played they, they had this little corrupted logo on it and when I went to my phone they weren't there so I lost a lot of my saved content that we were going to react to today. So I'm really sorry about the length of this video. I planned on it to be in a good hour and a half a really long video but as always, if you did find any of these clips that we had today interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.